Hello students. Today we learn about the continuous probability distribution. It also from the module 3 where you already studied the discrete probability distribution and two particular cases namely binomial and this uh, Poisson distribution. Next we study one more kind of distribution is called as continuous probability distribution and two particular cases. Now in the beginning of this module, we already studied the random variable and two types and one is discrete, other is continuous. Now, we studied the distribution corresponding to discrete called a discrete part distribution and now we study the distribution corresponding to continuous variable and it is called as continuous probability distribution. Now, so let us consider a continuous variable, the variable which take continuous values, that is if x is a continuous variable, then let us consider a function in this x. We do know that function as f of x or p of x, which is a function in this continuous variable x. Now, if this function satisfy these two conditions that it takes only non-negative values, that is p of x or f of x greater than or equal to 0. And the second condition is the value of the integral minus infinity to plus infinity of this function is equal to 1. If both the conditions are satisfied, then the function is called as probability density function. Probability function or PDF of a continuous variable and the corresponding distribution is called as continuous probability distribution. Therefore, continuous probability distribution is nothing but distribution corresponding to a continuous variable x where the probability function satisfies the two conditions which are this uh, p of x or f of x greater than or equal to 0 and the second condition is that integral value from minus infinity to plus infinity is always equal to 1. Okay. Now, next we define what is called the probability over an interval. Probability over an interval. This is not defined in case of discrete power distribution. The reason is discrete probability distribution won't take all the values in an interval. It takes discrete values where which there is a definite gap between two successive values. Now, whereas the continuous variables takes the continuous values over an interval, therefore here we are going to define probability over an interval. So it is denoted as P of A less than or equal to X less than or equal to B, where we are taking a closed interval that is same as probability over an open interval a less than x less than b it is also equal to probability over half open half closed interval that is closed at a open at b and also probability open at a for the interval open at a and close at b it is given by the integral a to b where is the lower limit b is the upper limit of that intervals of that probability function which is taken as f of x or p of x okay this integral value which are going to get a constant and this constant is called as the 
this concept is called as the probability over an interval okay and what is this value always is always less than one or maximum it is equal to one okay that means this integral value is always less than or equal to one so while working problems you have to be careful that if you get a value greater than one that means you have gone wrong some way okay now let us move on to the next set of definitions you recall what we defined in case of the discrete product distribution we define mean and standard deviation in fact we have calculated them also so we are defined them using what is called expectation of a function in an probability distribution expectation of a function now so if you consider phi of x is a function in x where x is a discrete uh, this continuous random variable then its expectation is de defined as e of phi of x which is equal to integral minus infinity to plus infinity phi of x into the probability function p of x or we can denote p of x by f of x this integral value is called expectation of a function in the continuous probability distribution now using this we define mean and mean we know that it is denoted as mu it is nothing but expectation of x the function phi of x equals to x which is nothing but the integral minus infinity to plus infinity x into p of x dx now variance next definition we take it as variance and it is the definition is same as the definition in case of discrete product distribution the notation for this variance is sigma square which is nothing but expectation of x minus mu whole square which is equal to integral minus infinity to plus infinity that x minus mu whole square into p of x dx and instead of p of x you can take f of x i'm using both the notation f of x and p of x here because you have to be familiar with both notation okay because in some books that pdf is not as p of x in some books it is f of x okay now standard deviation which is abbreviated st is nothing but positive square root of this variance and we are derived an alternate formula in case of the discrete product distribution for this variance which we are used effectively to calculate the variance and from that the standard deviation the same result holds good to you which can be proved very easily now st uh, st start with the definition of the expectation of a function which is given by this integral okay now expand it if expand you get minus infinity plus infinity expand x minus whole square you're getting x squared minus 2 mu x plus mu square now multiply with p of x and split into three integrals that is the property of definite integral split so we can split this integral as minus infinity plus infinity x square into p of x dx minus so second integral 2 mu is a constant which can be taken outside in minus 2 mu into integral minus infinity plus infinity x into p of x dx and the next integral is integral minus infinity plus infinity x uh, square uh, mu square mu square can be written outside okay because it is a constant so mu square can be written outside mu square into integral minus infinity plus infinity p of x dx okay these are the three integrals we are going to get and we know that by the definition integral x into p of x dx equals to 1 so i can replace this by sorry not 1 it is mu the mean whereas the integral minus infinity plus infinity p of x dx equals to 1 because p of x is the pdf or probability function now 
substituting for these two integrals we get mu square equals the first integral is nothing but expectation of x square minus 2 mu into mu plus mu into 1 mu square into 1 it simplifies to e of x square minus mu square and this is the formula we are going to use to find the variance and taking the square root of that we are getting the standard deviation okay now next we define the cumulative distribution function abbreviated as cdf so we already defined this in the discrete probability distribution in case of continuous probability distribution the cdf is defined as and it is denoted by f of t it is nothing but probability of the variable x less than equal to t which is nothing but the integral minus infinity to t p of x or f of x dx so that means value of this integral which you are going to get a function in t because the upper limit is t the variable so you are getting this as a function in t that's why it is known as capital f of t and this is called the cdf now so we can show we find a relation between cdf and probability over an interval the relation is very simple we can show that probability over an interval that is p of a less than x less than equal to x or less than x less than equal to less than b equals to f of b minus f of a is very easy to remember this result because you can remember in words like this probability over an interval is nothing but value of cdf at the upper limit in case it is b minus value of the cdf at lower limit now these things we are using later in the problems now the problems on continuous product distributions are nothing but problems on definite integrals definite integrals so if you know good at the integration the problems you can easily solve because problems on continuous product distribution problems on definite integrals of course we given very simple integrals exactly we come across the splitting function non-splitting function and the function where we have to use a uh, certain property of definite integral so using that you can easily evaluate probability uh, or we can work with problems on continuous probability distribution now so in the next video i'll explain or we'll work with problems first i'll explain the procedure then we'll work with problems on the continuous probability distribution okay thank you